Uh, Kyle, you're talking about one of the most important topics here, about the faculties of the human person. Most people are saying, what? What are you talking about? Just went right over their head. But unless they understand this, they're not going to understand spiritual warfare. So can you go and tell us about the faculties of the human person and the necessity of right order? Rightly ordered, the flesh is, is at the uh, command of the soul, meaning the soul commands or the soul is the master of the flesh which endures for its sanctification and its worship and, and its relationship with God. Disordered, the soul becomes the hostage of the flesh. Uh. And so a simple orientation is that the two faculties at the bookends at either end of this, the primary faculty is intellect. The most subservient faculty or the lowest faculty is instinct. But what happens in fear, once fear enters, which is the first rotten fruit of sin, Immediately, instinct or preservation of the corpus leapfrogs from the bottom all the way up to the top. Um, any of you who have ever been terrified and run into a door or you've been terrified and you do something stupid, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Our, we become dysfunctional in light of fear, depending on how paralyzing or how, um, how much the fear is. And what St. Thomas says Fear is the unmoderated reaction to a perceived future evil. Now, that may sound academic, but if you stop, I mean, this is this is Captain Obvious stuff. This is Joe Catholic. This is Captain Obvious stuff. You know, Captain Obvious would say you, you hit your hammer, your thumb with that hammer. It's going to hurt. That's exactly what St. Thomas is saying. When you do this, this is the consequence. So in the pagan mentality, the faculties are upside down because preservation of the corpus, growing of the corpus, um, flesh, <clears throat> that is the primary, uh, that is the primary uh, faculty. And then the intellect is all is pushed down below that. And so if we make decisions out of these lower faculties, uh, we're by we're by definition insane. Okay, I know you're. Uh, you can only guess on this one, I, but since you know him probably better than anybody in the world, what do you think that Father Ripperger is going to say on his seventh talk, where the title is "Observations of an Exorcist on the Current State of the World"? What do you think he's going to share with the audience? I think two things, Jesse. One is he's going to state the obvious because. You know, Joe Catholic sees what's going on. You have a properly formed Catholic conscience, a built-in BS meter. We are the, we've got to start standing up and say the emperor has no clothes. We've got to make the hard statements. Synodality has never been part of the Catholic Church, and it shouldn't be part of it now. We've got to make the hard statements. Amen. No matter how politically incorrect or how in opposition they are to hierarchy, when hierarchy is, is in inconsistent with 19 centuries of Catholicism, you're, you're always on safe ground to be Captain Obvious and point out, look, this is just simply inconsistent with the 19 centuries that came before. So what necessitates the change? Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Do we now amend that statement and say Christ was, is this, was the same yesterday and today? However, tomorrow we're going to update him. We're, we're going to have Christ 2.0. <clears throat> you got to point out the obvious. And I think Father's going to do that. And then what he's going to do that, that we may not be prepared for is he's going to tell you, he's going to pull back the curtain. He's going to pull back the curtain and he's going to say, these are the spiritual forces at work. And here's the way this shapes up. And here's what's really moving. These are the beasts that are under the blanket. These are the things that aren't clearly defined, but moving the landscape nonetheless and I, I think that's not meant to terrorize or to be fearful, to build urgency. It's simply to bring care, clarity and going back to uh, identity. God has so deigned that we live in these times. <clears throat> and it's for a reason. It's for a purpose. And we're sent here just like the angels, mission specific to participate in the economy of salvation in a given moment in history because we're tangible creatures that have a a chronological or a temporal part of our existence before we slip into eternal life. Embrace what's going on, be situationally aware, know how to pray, but more importantly, know how to preserve the faith in your domestic church. 
Kyle, just to show you how uh, the current state of the world right now and, and how the diabolical has has pushed absurdity, absurdity, I mean, to an extreme. We have today, after, after school programs where Satanists babysit your kids until they're picked up by their parents and they give them satanic coloring books, we also have Satanists that are doing invocations at city council meetings. We also know that Satanists, they, uh, you know, they, they erect satanic statues around the country. We have uh, Satanists that are military and prison chaplains. We know that uh, the Temple of Satan has adopted parts of the freeways to keep them clean, to curry favor with politicians. And uh, one of the biggest, talk about uh, points of absurdity, we have Satanists coming to Scottsdale, Arizona for their first satanic conference. Uh, this is, uh, it, it's like in your face, it's open right now, and Catholics need to, need to uh, wake up, be holy, live in a state of grace, and fight back using the tools that God has given us, the weapons of war, which are spiritual. Uh, Kyle, what say you? I think you're exactly right, Jesse. We look back on the times as we as men need to be saying mea culpa, mea culpa. I'll guarantee you if uh, Joe Catholic, Joe Blue Collar Catholic had gone into the library and told the drag queens, move over, I'm going to read them about Mike and the steam shovel, you'd have had a whole different deal. But we just sit here like toad frog in a hailstorm. That's an old West Texas expression. <laughs> paralyzed by the, the things that are happening. Well, we've got to wake up. A wake sleeper. You're exactly right. But it's, it's up to us as men. You know, Canada, we're seeing this happen in Canada when the truck drivers basically say, basta, that's enough, guys. It's enough. We as Catholic men have to, to make this stand if we're going to preserve our faith, our domestic churches, and our integrity. We've got to, to, to take an active part. And I think you show up in mass <clears throat> in your work clothes uh, in Scottsdale and just not, not going to have it. Uh, there's going to be uh, 500 or 1,000 of Joe Catholics that are just going to pray the rosary right here. And we're going to call and make present through projection our Blessed Mother. And then you guys can deal with it. But until we start um, taking an active role, um, then we're all armchair quarterbacks. We're all just, you know, Monday morning critics. We're all political pundits. And, and this, is, this is not a spectator activity. This is a participant activity. So roll your sleeves up, quit whining, and get out there. 